Hello people, welcome to episode 12 of the Irrelevant Rockcast. I am Matanza Mafia Fedora and my co-host is... Mr. DuPont. And today, we are getting back to the Irrelevant Rockcast because we have not been doing this for a few weeks and now we have got news that we just want to get cracking out there, don't we? Um, very much so. We're going to be covering um, four separate topics this week and first things first, um, we're going to be discussing... The life of Prince. Um, sad news. On the 21st of April, Prince Rogers Nelson was found dead in his lift in his Minneapolis home, Paisley Park. Um, a cause of death has not yet been unveiled. However, strong rumours are that he died of a painkiller's overdose. Yeah, it was illegal prescription drugs, apparently, which is a very big oxymoron. Indeed, and... Um, <laughs> From what I've read, it seems that he's been having problems with his hips for years and to deal with the pain, he's been taking painkillers and seems like he's overdosed on them. And that's just what we believe. But apparently he didn't get cure for his um, for his pain or didn't go to hospital or anything because he's Jehovah's Witness. So he was against all that. Yeah, that's an interesting concept in itself. But anyway, yeah. What to say, really? Well, Prince um, was 57 when he died. Yeah. Um, he spent all of his life living in Minneapolis. And that was where his signature film, Purple Rain, was filmed in First Avenue. Yeah. And speaking personally, I'm a massive Prince fan. I've been a fan of his for about eight years. I've seen him live twice, both exhilarating experiences. And as I mentioned on the radio yesterday on Sound Radio here at uni... Arguably the most talented musician of all time. And I would definitely agree with that, because really, was there a genre that he couldn't write a great song for? And was there anything musically that he couldn't do? He could play virtually every instrument that every artist that has ever made it up to his level could ever play. He can sing, he can write brilliant stuff, and Prince. I didn't get to see any of his shows because, as a lot of people are aware, I am a latecomer to gigs due to poor finance. But, yeah, Prince, like many other people, he was a great inspiration on the whole rock spectrum. In fact, the generic music spectrum. And, famously, when Eric Clapton was asked, how does it feel to be the greatest guitarist on the planet, he said, I don't know. Us Prince. And that was showcased by the guitar solo at the end of Let's Go Crazy, which is one of my favourite songs. Um, my favourite Prince song is actually I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man, which is on the Sign of the Times album. It's one of the, it was a single off the album and it's got a really kind of upbeat, um, it's got like an up, upbeat verse. It's got a like killer chorus, killer riff and great guitar solo halfway through and it's got it combines both pop and rock music together well um prince wrote fantastic music as you mentioned before so many genres prince could write a rock album a pop album a funk album a hip-hop album a brilliant soundtrack for a movie i.e batman yes he did that was 1989 i believe and um yep. Prince was also an actor as well. Um, his films weren't acclaimed. Well, Purple Rain had great acclaim, but his films after that weren't as such. But um, it, it's the kind of thing, really. Like the Beatles and the Beatles fans and Elvis and his fans, they loved them, the movies they made, even if they were a bit naff. Prince yeah. very much fell into that yeah. category. He also made a cameo appearance as a guest version of himself on New Girl, actually. I found that out literally just a few weeks ago. And, yeah, I didn't even realise it. I am so out of touch with some of the TV shows that I watch. So, yeah, that was something that I really, really will try and look up again at some point. But, yeah, you had two great singers in that show now. Zooey Deschanel and Prince coming onto the spotlight. So, yeah, and also my favourite Prince song. It probably would be considered the cop-out. Because also it is probably the one song that people know above all of his discography. And at the same time, they'll immediately associate it with Sinead O'Connor before they may do 
him, but nothing compares to you, which both versions are amazing. They both bring something completely different to that song, but you can tell very much that both do it justice. Prince, it's refreshing to hear the original take on it, if you like, with the way how he would have done it. After you spend so many times listening to Sinead, never getting tired of that song, but you still feel very, very refreshed and enlightened to see how the original concept of that song was brought to life through the magic of the man, the myth, and the legend, the artist formerly known as Prince. Well, that was what Prince was called um, when he became an unpronounceable symbol in the 1990s. And, um, and that was due to like a falling out of his record company, I believe. And um, one of his biggest hit singles was actually from that era, which was The Most Beautiful Girl in the World, which is his only UK number one single. He had five US number one singles, but he had many number one UK albums. And um, what was it? Um, yeah, Nothing Compares to You. He didn't only write that song for well that's a song that he wrote for an a, that was well, covered by another artist manic monday yeah. by the bangles that, that was another hit song that he wrote yeah um other hits that he just wrote which are considered prince classics are the likes of 1999 little red corvette i want to be your lover when doves cry purple rain mm-hmm. kiss sign of the times diamonds and pearls um was it raspberry beret let's go crazy um, was it My Name is Prince, Seven, um, there's probably a few I've missed, but list goes on, so many classic hits. Um, as many hits as he had different stage names, mm. and famously, in an episode of Celebrity Deathmatch, which I may say is basically stop motion animation, so do not mistake this for real life, he fought against Prince Charles in a match where... Prince Charles officially changed his name to The Prince, formerly known as Charles. And, yeah, it was a hilarious video to watch that, and it's on YouTube. Go and check it out. It is hilarious. Excellent. But um, one thing that obviously isn't hilarious is, um, well, the day he died, I was actually coming back from work, and I looked at my phone, and I was just like, fuck's sake. You know, it's another... 20... It's, it's another game changer. I mean, to be honest, this death, I think, out of all the deaths that have happened over the last five, six months, it kind of hit me just as hard as any of them, and probably more so, actually, only because Prince had so much more left to give. He was such a creative outlook, and he had 39 or 40 studio albums. So creative. He had two that came out um, over the past couple of years, and he had a new band called Third Eyed Girl, who he'd been touring with, which are a band that consisted of um, like f- females, like on bass, guitar, drums. And the guy had so much more left to give. He was only 57 years old. And as I mentioned before, so creative, probably would have gone on to release another good 10 studio albums had he gone on to, you know, let's say, pass of old age, yeah. as we as he hoped he would, but that's not the case. But Prince is chameleon like david bowie exactly. you know he's almost like the american equivalent of bowie to that extent and the people who we, were, who we were losing are real icons in the music industry you know these are real game changers who have sold millions inspired millions and yeah like in fact 2016 is the era of suck it mm. basically but you know it was really in 2015 where we were starting to lose big icons of both music and film Mm -hmm. where you could tell this was going to be a very difficult time it was our defining year for films and we lost christopher lee Mm -hmm. wes craven and leonard nimoy so yeah it's just a very sad thing and nowadays we're losing mostly musicians but artists in general of such incredible magnitude from we're counting December, just because that's as close as we're going to get, really, as a good starting point for the tragedy. For sure, and obviously we've also lost actors and comedians in that time. Yeah, we've lost Wyland, Lemmy, we've lost Bowie, we've lost Rickman, we lost... Glenn Fry. 
Yeah, we lost prior to that, BB King. We did, and um, maybe musician. We also lost um, specials drummer. There was, um, it was it um, Mott the Hoople's drummer as well. Um, was it Jimmy Bain, who was obviously Dion Rainbow's bass player? Is this, you know, deaths like these do happen, but just not, not in such a short space. You know, not in my time of loving music anyway. But um, I was in shock, though. I tell you what, man. When I when I found out that Prince had died, at first I thought it was some kind of like rumor that, that, or something, and then when you found out it's actually true, you're just like, wow. So so Prince dies like three months after David Bowie. Just like, wow, that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's, like... it's, 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 and I'll tell you what, man, like, I, I got upset only, only because, you know, I'll never forget waiting in a, you know, five, six hour queue with my good friend, Chris Head, waiting to get into the Coco in February 2014 into the secret print show. It was so exciting. Met some lovely people in the queue that day as well. Yeah. And those are memories you'll just never forget. And it's only somewhat, very few artists, you know, can do that for instance play like three gigs in london in one evening secretly and prince is someone who you very much think yep that would work for prince yeah exactly it's just one of those things like uh, you know it would be very very repetitive just to say how bad this year has been for all these great artists and icons but there is just more and more reason to keep saying it you know while still remaining purely a musician, Prince was practically a renaissance man, much the way how I view James Masters. <laughs> and as you all know, guys, I love James Masters. But, you know, where you've got so many great professions that he commits to, which go outside of music, Prince did all that just within music before you even got into his film yes one thing that we haven't mentioned as well was prince was a producer as well he, he produced them um, forever artist he produced for himself there wasn't anything that the guy couldn't do really you know he was he he essentially prince defines creativity and talent you yeah. know if, if that word if, if the word creativity or even talent in the dictionary prince's name should be underneath yeah pretty and, much and that's it and, and the thing is i think well, Prince didn't like putting his music on the internet. Um, his music wasn't on YouTube. As far as I'm aware, it's not on Spotify. And unfortunately, that, that's meant that his music hasn't as much reached a younger generation as such, who are the internet, Facebook generation. People know who Prince is. It's only because obviously since myself and you, Matt, have gone back to university, there hasn't been any tributes or any mention of Prince, which is a shame, which yeah. is one of the reasons why we're doing this. But um, And also, it's an arts university. They can't exactly have an excuse not to do it. Uh, well, here we are, Matanza Mafia Fedora. Um, and, you know, it is, it is a tragedy losing such, a, such an inspirational icon. And to be honest, I was completely speechless. Um, you know, when I first looked at my phone and found out the news, you know, you don't, you can't put it into words. I mean, Prince gone. Yeah. You know, so many, you know, Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston, now Prince, all in the space of six years, all absolute icons of the Seven, 80s. actually, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like, it is just still such a short amount of time. But also, you know, Michael Jackson... The guy was never overrated, but it only goes to show you how many icons we've lost in the past year and how underrated they are. Even icons of the magnitude of Christopher Lee. You know, more than 200 films in a career that was practically his full life outside of World War II, serving in not only the British, but the Finnish army. And... All of his, you know, success is attributed to an accident that he was a trained opera singer who couldn't afford to make it in opera because apparently, from what I can gather, he just didn't have any way of financially sustaining his way into that particular industry. And yeah, it was too much talent to waste, so he took it to the next best thing, acting. Indeed. Well, going back to Prince, um, I, 
I first saw Purple Rain, the film, in 2009, I believe it was, and around that time I actually used his music in one of my college productions. I used 1999 for a, for a 1980s version of Bouncers, um, Bouncers and Shakers. It was something that myself and um, a few other drama students put together, and they because I knew my music so well, and I knew so much 80s, I thought, yeah, I'll use 1999 just because it's so hooky. Yeah. Um, it's, it's such an absolute tune. Yeah. Um, and believe... You know, people have responded to Prince's death. His music is all over the chart at the moment. Singles yeah. chart, albums chart. Prince is there. You go into CD stores, the Prince section is completely sold out. And that's fantastic to see that people are, you know, reacting to the death of such an icon. Um, that his music is being played, celebrated as it should be. And, you know, um, let's just say that the two of us, we've been playing his music over yeah. the past couple of weeks. And yeah. yeah, it's just, you know, he didn't make too many UK appearances over the past few week, um, years, sorry. but And um, that's because, um, you know, he, he was a guy who, any time he got offered things, he tended to say no because Prince did things his way. If he wanted to play that random festival, he would do it. Rather, he would rather play the Hot Farm in Kent, which was the first place I saw him at, yeah. than play Glastonbury. Which I don't blame him for, yeah. because <laughs> you all know our philosophy. If it loses its credibility, then it's no longer worth commemorating. Glastonbury is a festival that has fallen from rock and roll's grace. Um, well, as well, he actually, in, in 2007, he played, still to this day, the longest ever residency at the O2 Arena. I believe he played 21 sold-out shows there. 21 which, which, sold-out shows. Yeah. The artist formerly known as Prince is the artist forever deemed worthy of a great title. Got you. Ding! And just to let you know, Matt, just in case you didn't know, um, his name actually went back to Prince in the year 2000. Well, yeah, I know. I do know the full story about his name changes. I got you. And yeah, he was also known as the purple one at random points. He was, yeah. <laughs> he was, and um, if anyone, if any listeners here haven't seen Purple Rain, the film, it's a great, like, it's a great uh, music film, fantastic story, fantastic songs, and really, the film and the soundtrack together is phenomenal, to be honest. It's, it's, it's inspiring. Yeah. Have you got a favourite Prince song that sticks out? Um, well, I mentioned it earlier. It was, um, I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man from um, Sign of the Times. That's my favourite Prince song. And I had the pleasure of seeing him perform it at the Coco in 2014. Yeah. And I've been told, actually, since, I'm very lucky to have seen Prince perform. I am lucky because so many haven't. I, you know, I have a lot of friends who always admired and respected Prince and never got the chance to see him. And I feel like I'm one of the lucky few of the people in my life who have. And, um, you know, he, he, was, he was a real rock and roll hero, you know. And even though Prince did all kinds of styles of music, he was a rock star. His yeah. attitude, you know, the, the, there was an egotistical diva side of Prince. You know, he was quite eccentric. You know, there, were, there is... Um, yeah, you know, Prince basically almost did everything. As far as I'm aware, he didn't have a drug and alcohol reputation, and and definitely not one that puts him on the same scale as basically a walking atom bomb for like sure. Lemmy. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I I don't think to be honest, the amount of work and what Prince did on stage, I think you had to be clean to be able to do what he did because yeah. Prince was the kind of star who you would see perform and your jaw would drop. How did he do that? You know, and for instance, let me give you a couple of examples. The Super Bowl halftime show in 2007, where Which he is, played in the thunderstorm. Yeah. Say what you want about American football. We both know it's not particularly our thing. I'm a rugby guy and a football guy, as in association football, and you're pretty much association football, same as any typical Brit would be. Mm -hmm. But the halftime shows are always something to look forward to. And that is basically what most of America and the world that isn't interested in that sport would dive onto their plasmas for. Just the halftime shows. And Prince's is probably the best. Yeah. Um, I've never seen one that tops it, to be fair. Yeah. I know that Springsteen and Tom Petty did a few few really good ones. Yeah. And um, that was actually... 
Petty was 2008 and Springsteen was 2009. But going on to the other, um, one of Prince's most memorable performances was in 2004, he got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and then he played um, lead guitar, While My Guitar Gently Weeps, alongside Tom Petty and Jeff Lynne from ELO. And, and he stole has, the show. And since that thing has happened with Prince's death, that vid has skyrocketed. More than 25 million have viewed that video ahead of his actual induction speech and his acceptance award speech. And it's just like, you know, people are more interested in seeing the guy actually get out the goods than they are anything else, but it's amazing how it just takes a death to make you skyrocket in a manner which, in all honesty, your legacy is worth forever pushing you up there to the stars and beyond. And the fact that there are so many icons going these days only really with people of our generation, Alex, who are understanding the full magnitude of their success, their legacy, just because there's no way we're going to say it to their face anymore. And they're finally getting the respect they deserve because of a guilt trip, it seems. How do you feel about that? Um, it's something that's always happening. It's something that always will happen. Um, one yeah. thing that I'm proud to say is that the people who have been passing, or the musicians, apart from Bowie, and well, let's just say that I had the pleasure of seeing um, Scott Weiland, Lemmy, and Prince. So, you know, three musical icons who have passed away. And um, I've had the pleasure of seeing them so I can share stories with people. And and, and that, that's one thing, guys. If 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 you're listening here and you want to go and see a band that you admire and they're aging, or even if they're not, go, pay to see them if you can afford it. The next ep- opportunity, if, you, if you're free and you can afford it, next opportunity you get to see them. Because you don't know if it will be the last time. You know, as sad as, sad as that is to say, and it's something I don't really want to say, but... I'm glad that I went to those Prince gigs because if I didn't, then one, you know, one of my heroes um, would be gone, and I would have regretted not going. You know, and yeah. Ronnie James Dio is a hero of mine who I never got to see, and you know, yeah. I regret not going to like any Heaven and Hell or Dio shows when I was yeah. younger. You know. Yeah, I still haven't seen a fair few people, but I would be probably in a way that you could never even imagine. And if you could, I would be very, very surprised. The magnitude of me suddenly finding out that tomorrow James Masters ended up dying and I couldn't end up seeing him ever, ever in my life, should I never have saw him already. It's a pain that is so great that very few people, you know, are free from that thing because these icons, their legacy spans generations. But, if you do get the chance, don't waste it. There are too many people in the world who will have to suffer because of that. Oh, for sure. And, um, you know, Prince, that vocal range, you know, when Bowie died, we did the tribute um, podcast to him. Um, We were talking about his vocal range. Let me tell you this, ma'am. Prince's vocal range, high notes, low notes. He could sing anything, and he could rap. He could du- he a phenomenal dancer. You know, people talk about Michael Jackson's moonwalk. You should see Prince dance during the Little Red Corvette video during the middle. In- uh-huh. Incredible, yeah. incredible. And um, you know, I want to thank Prince for the memories of playing his music in the evenings, to watching his films, to seeing him live, and. Um, the memories, the creativity, he's an inspiration to myself and to, you know, several million across the globe. And one of my best friends, Chris Head, his all time favorite musical artist is Prince. Mm -hmm. And, um, he actually hosted a Prince tribute night at the firehouse. Um, was it, um, a couple of weeks ago? Um, I couldn't unfortunately make that because, um, it was around the time of university assignments Yeah, and, um, you know, I knew that we'd be doing this as well, so we could pay our own tribute um, yeah. to Prince. But um, yeah, um, any last words on the Prince subject? 
I think I would just like to say thank you, Prince, for everything that you have ended up giving us, and your music shall live on in our hearts forever. I wish there was more to say, but it would all be counterproductive, because the world is fully aware of your magnitude. So, artist formerly known as Prince, I salute you.